I started posturing towards God. I started trusting my husband. Then I was like, hey, how many babies you want? <laughs> that's really that's really the only reason we was even pregnant. I really want to shine a light and celebrate being a woman. Uh, it's such a celebratory thing. And I'm just so glad that like God has given me this gift and put me in this body uh, to do these amazing things. It ain't the best thing. It ain't fun when somebody truly knows you. Right? When they know you and they can see through everything that you putting up as a barrier. And they piercing through that joint. And at that time, it ain't the nice save nail. It's the unapologetic nail. And me being weak emotionally then, really where I was hurt and it was truthful and it was honest. And I was still like, nah, 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 she just tripping, she just tripping. But it was like, yo, if you could get past this part and you can get to what she actually saying, because you definitely agree that she's right. If you could get beyond the point of you trying to be who you are and put on this front and allow her to actually come in, despite how she's delivering what she's delivering, despite what the words she's using or saying, if you could actually just be like, yeah, you're right. Then you can get to where you initially saw this thing quicker, which was, we're gonna be goofy. We're gonna have good times and we're gonna create a life together that you desire. But when somebody reading you your rights and you are, uh, you a person that think you got it all together and, and they tripping, yeah, it's not the easiest thing and it, it causes, it causes uh, some tough conversations. So when you guys are having these honest conversations and Corey is sharing information with you about you, mm -hmm. how are you receiving it? Uh, he's a liar. <laughs> nah, I'm not aggressive. I'm, I'm not selfish. Like, I don't, uh, go too hard, uh, uh, whatever it was, because I'm, cause I'm like, you the only person that see that. I'm like, hey, go ask so-and-so. They'll tell you, that's not how I am. Go ask them, they'll tell you, that's not how I am. And um, uh, I don't know what characteristics of God that he has more or less of, but I'm just so certain that humor is at the top of the list. Um, because marriage, marriage is such a mirror. And I think most, a lot of people go, they like, they hold marriages and they don't realize that the reason why your spouse, the only one that say, that say the stuff they say about you is because they the only one that's privy to seeing it. The reason why, um, uh, it's stuff that you could get away with in front of large groups of people or in passing encounters with other people, but you can't get away with that stuff with your spouse, it's because they right there with you. So I, I wasn't receiving anything that uh, Corey was saying at the time. And uh, how dare he even say something was wrong with me. What happens if I try to believe in God, but I can't? What happens if I truly believe that there is a God and he wants great things for me, but he just isn't who they say he is? How do I find the truth? Where is it? Who has it? This is emotionally exhausting. I can't help but believe my life is confusing right now because I am not close to God. Uh, like, I don't trust Corey because I don't trust or know God. Um, in my mind, Nell didn't necessarily have a problem with submitting I think I didn't give her the proper setting to submit herself to. She had an image of a, of a great father, right? And early on, I wasn't fit in the mold. Uh, she wasn't trying to submit to me or hear anything about like, I'm gonna do what Corey say, or even consult with Corey when Corey ain't even who, you know, I thought he was gonna be in this marriage. Um, and I can understand why things were confusing because, you know what I'm saying, we we just weren't 
we weren't on the same page. And not being on the same page in a, in a young relationships, just, just it lets a lot of things creep in that uh, push and pull you towards your train of thought. And you'll find a lot of validity in the things that you are thinking because you think it's right. And so when she uh, was struggling to submit and I was struggling to be like, uh, you know what I'm saying, a good leader, because I think it came down to respect. And I felt like I wasn't being respected in certain things. I, I tabled it. I tabled Corey. Uh, and I like not like in the sense of separation, because um, we wasn't on that. But like in a sense of, okay, cool. I've gotten further and f- further along enough, far lo- far enough along in this process with God to understand that God got some work to do in me, and so I'm gonna just step to the side over here, and I'm gonna allow God to work on me over here. And I think I got the rules of engagement down to my understanding, which is if I step over here and do this, uh, God is gonna work on you. I think that's how it go. Uh, You God fearing, right? Okay, cool. That's good enough for right this second. (laughs) You just step over there. uh, I'm going to be over here uh, working on me. Like in hindsight, you know what I'm saying? I can articulate it like that, and it sounds real compartmentalized and separate. But it it wasn't like that. It's, you know, it's it's a struggle back and forth. Um, Some days amazing. You know, some days still fighting. But the way I look at it now, when I look back at it is, uh, and it just makes me happy because, uh, like, we did it by the grace of God. Like, we did it. But the things that we had to, like, press in and endure, like, after making conscious decisions, uh, uh, the conscious decision to walk with God, um, yes, you know, it, it was very testy. Uh, and I ain't have, I ain't even have a whole lot of faith at that point. I'm talking about whatever is... Uh, What's smaller than a mustard seed? <laughs> what? How big is a sesame seed? <laughs> how big is a speck of pepper? <laughs> I just was out here like, all right, cool. My husband said we ain't getting no divorce. Uh, let's uh, go holler back at um, the entity that was at the altar with us when we got married. God, uh, hey, what's up? Man, this stuff is uh, terrible, if you, as you can see. <laughs> what we need to do. It was very selfish. My relationship with God in the beginning was very, very like, Hey, I'm only here to uh, get, you know what I'm saying, the good life that you said happens uh, when we believe in you. <laughs> Go ahead and show me that life. <laughs> um, but I, the correlation is, you know, they be like causation. Uh, correlation don't equal causation. In my situation, uh, correlation definitely equals causation. My relationship with my husband and my marriage got better because my relationship with God uh uh, my ultimate provider, my ultimate source, got better. So when we moved into our place, uh, before we bought our house, I think in that time frame is when I started to see her, uh, her wheel spinning more about who she was as a person Right, and then about who I was in our relationship and who I was as a person, and she was getting a little bit more comfortable with it because I was taking on more responsibility. And I was, you know, we had been through some things prior to that that we kind of came out of. And then uh, Joy came because we were expecting. And when Joy came, you could see on her face that like, this is a part of what she wanted in her marriage. She knew this was gonna be a piece of it. And she was looking at me with a different glow behind it because we had gotten this far and we had been through so much. Uh, And I think then uh, she started to believe that, okay, maybe I can start, maybe we can, we've had tough conversations, we pushed and pulled and tugged with each other, but there looks like there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And it looks like, you know, he's becoming more of, a, of the man that I want him to become.
how to become a child impact your relationship with God? Um, man, uh, losing a kid shifted me in so many ways. Like, I, like I seen myself in ways that I have never seen myself. Like, you got to understand, up until this point in life, like I live a very, to this day, I live a very blessed, favored, and privileged life. Like, my life does not have uh, some of the things that like so many people like just have to deal with. Um, and so uh, losing our, our first child was literally the first fundamentally traumatic event that I had ever been through in life. And before we get into the journal entries, mm -hmm. uh, this was otherwise a happy time, even though you guys have gotten to the other side. Oh, like, Chris, when I, man, God, it's just so good. Golly. Before the tornado comes, there is a siren, an alarm that the, that the city, like, sets off. And this alarm goes and goes and goes. And this alarm is to tell you uh, to take shelter. Now, because I've, I, I have lived in a tornado alley, but I've never been there doing like, or present during like active tornadoes. Um, but to my knowledge, it's like, when you hear that, that siren, this ain't the get in your car and drive off. Like this is the, no, if you hearing this siren, you need to hunker down. And so when I think about uh, my relationship, man, when I think about my relationship with God uh, and with Corey uh, at this time, um, when we lose uh, our baby, everything that was happening before was the siren going off. And glory to God. Uh, we start hunkering down. We start pinning down communication in our relationship. We start, you know, hunkering down and uh, loving on each other and being open with each other and trusting each other. Um, like, it's annoying uh, when I be processing while, like, uh, when I be having this stuff come to my mind for the first time while I'm uh, sitting on camera, but that's what we're here for. Um, just as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking back at it now and I can see it. Yo, in a lot of respects, it wasn't no reason for me to be as frustrated as I was. Like your relationship and walk with God, like ain't gotta be that frustrating. Uh, you know, you can just kind of like go deeper with them, you know, piece by piece, little by little. And you know, with his grace and his mercy cover you, y'all just take y'all little walk uh, through the park. Um, I had such an aggressive uh, move towards God and posturing towards God and posturing towards my husband. Man, and in hindsight, that's because I needed it. In hindsight, we likely could have spiritually and emotionally died uh, if we hadn't begun posturing before that. I say all that to say, and I use the tornado and the alarm because I want you to understand how close it was. I mean, we talking about months. We talking about the only reason why we even pregnant is because like that was like one more area of my life that I was giving over to God. I'm like, okay, God, I got my plans about, you know, when we gonna get pregnant, uh, how many kids we gonna have, da, 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 da. And it was like, and I was only on that because I was scared. I was trying to be controlling. I didn't really trust my husband the way you need to trust a man to have his babies. That, that's really it. Uh, and I started posturing towards God. I started trusting my husband. Then I was like, hey, how many babies you want? <laughs> that's really that's really the only reason we was even pregnant. Um, 
is because you know what I'm saying that like that area had been lifted, and so like it was so close, like reconciliation and better relation. Golly, baby, reconciliation and better relationship with God was literally months right before uh, we lose our first baby, and. Uh, I have I have given up. Before I came to God, I was on the. I need to understand how everything uh, ties into everything. Okay, God, why would you have us do this at this time? And okay, so that must mean that. that and I'm like, God, I ain't trying to draw uh, no lines <laughs> that you ain't trying to uh, uh, give to me. Um. And so I don't have all the answers about every nook and cranny and the nuances of the timing and all of that. I just know that if it is not for the, the small relationship that I start growing with Christ right before all of this, oh, we look very, very different uh, going through this and coming out of it. Very, very different. Corey watches me like a protector with great care. He watches me. And sometimes it's hard to look him in the eye. If I look too long, he will see it, the sadness. And because I'm sad, he will be sad too. And I need him to grieve for himself. This is between me and God. Only God can grant the peace I need. And only I can accept it. I need to know how long I have to walk around one trigger away from becoming completely undone. I want to make sure, like, I want to make sure I handle this the right way, man, because uh, glory to God, uh, we got two beautiful babies. Um, and that, I don't know what people think, but that don't, uh, that don't make you forget that you lost a child. Um, but I wanna handle it the right way because there are just so many women um, who are just like in the thick of it. Uh, and my heart go out to them. Like, I remember when, uh, oh man, it was just such a, it was such a hard process. And just even the way that it happened, like I woke up at like 4.32 a.m. I'll never forget. Like I woke straight up out of my sleep and I knew in that moment that my baby was gone. Like I just knew it. I was seven months pregnant and I knew, and I like, and you know how, like, you know, some people, they got, like, an answer, an explanation for every part of the process. I don't know why uh, God woke me up at 4.32 a.m. Which, uh, with such a, a surety about the state of the situation. Um, but, like, I woke, I mean, I woke straight up. And, and then I went through the process of doing all of the stuff that you do. Uh, anytime, you know what I'm saying, yo, uh, yo, like you pregnant and your baby ain't moved for a while. You know what I'm saying, you drink the juice, you know, you get active, you move up and down, you know what I'm saying, you push on your stomach. And uh, like he just wasn't responsive. You know, like you get in the tub, you know, like I'm, I'm in the tub, like, and I'm just in there, like, I'm just in there pleading, in there pleading with him, in there pleading with God. I'm in the living room pacing back and forth, you know, trying to like jump up and down, just pleading with God. And uh, I'm still teaching. I'm still teaching, so, uh, and Corey teaching at the time too. So I'm doing all of this, but I ain't really, I ain't set off the alarm in Corey yet because I'm on some, it's all good. Like the school day gonna be over with, I'm gonna go to the doctor, 
You know what I'm saying? We're going to get the checkup. Like, it's going to be, like, everything straight. And so I let him I let him leave and go to work. Uh, and something just shifted in me where I was like, I, I got to go to the emergency room right now. So I go. And it's all over the nurse face. Like, it's it's all over her face. You know, they, they do the first machine and... Um, she's like, you know, well, you know, sometimes this machine, da, 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 like whatever she could say to not have to tell me what she had to tell me before my husband got there. But, but I know, like, I, like I can see it, uh, and bless her heart is, is wearing on her. Like, like you, you can see her struggling, um, and some people might feel a way about that. Like, you know, she uh, shouldn't be doing that. Man, I'm thankful. I'm thankful uh, that I had a human in there in the room with me. Um, and that uh, even though it was like disheartening to her, you know, that she handled, uh, she handled me uh, with the most care uh, and love that you, you can handle a person in that situation. Um, so, you know, like she basically waits, my doctor waits until Corey gets there. You know, I call him uh, from work um, to tell us, you know, that they don't, you know, they don't see, they don't hear a heartbeat. They don't see one, they don't hear one, there's no movement and there is no explanation. There is nothing about me that says anything is wrong. Uh, and it is, it's just this, uh, I don't know how to articulate being so hopeful about something to have it like sucked and torn away from you. Uh, it just truly is something that you pray most people don't have to have to endure, but the truth is so many of us just do. Um, and it was devastating. And and like you sitting there and there's, you know, just this huge, like what's next and people are talking and they saying stuff and you just sitting there and I'm not putting two and two together. Like I'm just trying to digest, you know, whatever I could digest, however I can digest it. Um, and then this lady say to me, um, so when would you like to come back in? Like what, like what day is good for you? And I'm like, what you mean? Uh, and it's like, she like, because you so far along, you gotta deliver your baby. <laughs> and I almost feel like that was worse than finding out that he had passed away. Uh, and like at this point, man, I'm in the twilight zone. I'm like, like, what, like, what, like, what you mean? I gotta deliver my body? I don't even know. Like, how is my body gonna do that? What, like, what, what? Um, uh, and um. Man, I'm just, I'm thinking about, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the women who don't have kids and stuff yet. I'm trying to, but it's just so many women who go through it. And uh, and for some of us, like, it's a very uh, uh, graphic thing. And so like, I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Tread lightly as it relates to triggers. Um, and I wanna make sure that I get uh, to the light uh, because that's what's important. But like for two days, I, I carried my baby and he was gone. Like at seven months, you feel your baby in your stomach. So for two days, I had to feel my baby in my stomach. Uh, just knowing that like he wasn't there no more. 
Um, and that is a burden that no matter how uh, amazing your husband is, no matter how amazing your friends are, your mom and daddy, your sisters and brothers, they just can't carry it for you. Don't nobody feel the guilt you feel. And man, it was it was just the most traumatic thing I have ever been in in my life. And uh, what I want to specifically say uh, to women is. It don't matter what part of the process it happened for a woman in. Like, people love drawing lines. Like, your heart don't hurt just as much if you lose a baby at four weeks or uh, two months um, as it does when you lose a baby at seven months. Um, somebody always trying to one-up somebody, like, in the hurt. Like, it's uh, trophies out here uh, for trauma and hurt. Um, and oddly enough, one of the things I remember most feeling whenever, uh, whenever we had to deliver them, uh, after I delivered them, I was overcome with like so much grief and sorrow. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it was definitely mine, uh, but so much of it was for, oh man, the women that I know be on them tables by themselves. And I just like, I was taken back. I was like, there is no way I could have done, like I couldn't have done this without like my mama standing there, without my sister standing there, uh, Corey mama, my husband. And I just was like, hey, yo, it's some woman today, somewhere in somebody hospital doing this by herself. Um, and I just know for a fact that that ain't, uh, God's portion for us, you know, but for whatever reasons of life, um, it'd be like that for some of us. Um, and that, I don't know why that came over me at that time, uh, but I'll never forget that. Um, man, and then you just, you go through the process of trying to uh, grieve the best way that you know how. And it's the first time like I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, hey, you are not okay. Like, you are not okay. Um, I don't know what depression is outside of like a traumatic event like that. Like, I don't know what it is to have like a chronic, you know what I'm saying, depression. Uh, but I definitely would peg it as, you know what I'm saying, depression. Um, and I mean, it made me like, uh, it made me, uh, how do I say? Like it's, uh, it's, uh, it surrendered me. I'm trying to use my words carefully. I'm a woman that produces, like, you know, all women are, uh, for sure. Uh, but I'll be out here getting to it and it rendered me produceless like I couldn't do nothing but like sit on a couch and try not to think about the only thing that I'm thinking about um and it it's just it don't make no sense it's like I would I would hear myself laughing at something and I could hear the shallowness in my laugh. Like, if you know me, if you watch anything uh, that I got going on, um, you know when I laugh, I laugh from like the depth of me. And at this time, I didn't think that I would ever get back to a real laugh. Like I could hear that if the ocean is as deep as it is, my laugh was like two feet. Like that was the depth of my laugh. Like I could hear it. And it's like, man, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm articulating uh, 
what this is, uh, this depression, because a lot of people, they just don't get it and they just don't know what it is. Depression is seeing yourself, knowing something is wrong, knowing something needs to be done about it, but not being able to do nothing about it. And just kind of be like being rendered like just, but you watching yourself. And, and I was watching my husband and Corey did what Corey does. He's such an amazing husband. And this man just stood and watched over me uh, while I just like drug myself around. And like, I'd be like, <laughs> we in like a two bedroom apartment and I'd be trying to like hide my grief from him. I like go into the restroom and be like in the restroom, just completely coming undone. Uh, and he like, you know, come in there like, hey, why are you doing this in here by yourself? Like, like stop, like stop doing this. Um, stop robbing me of my job. Um, and in hindsight, I could not imagine what it's like. Uh, having your wife go through something and literally not being able to do anything about it. Like there is nothing he could have done uh, to save our baby. And then so now for me to take away his ability to at least help me, like, like you, can't, you can't do that. Um, but I also began to realize that I, I also cannot continue on the way I'm continuing because he needs to grieve. Like I remember, I remember like like looking at him one time and kind of being like the revelation came over me, like, oh he's waiting, he has not grieved, he's waiting to grieve until he knows I'm in a place where he can. Um. And that is one of the most like defining things that kind of began to like sober me up, but. Uh, like I said about that alarm, one day before all of this, I'm in my classroom and uh, I just have this this huge breakdown, you know, about like God and being confused and just, it was just, it was a lot. And through the uh, grace of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit had me pray a very, very specific prayer. And it was, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how real you are, how real you ain't. You know, what Jesus is about, I don't, like, I don't know. But if you could, please don't allow me to go through any traumatic event before I have had a real opportunity to know you. Like, I don't, I don't know what kind of prayer that is you pray. Like, why are you right in the middle of uh, being angry with God? But I did. And so one time uh, in one of my sessions of coming undone uh, in, the bath in the bathroom on the floor, I just, uh, I began to laugh. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, this is it. I'm in the traumatic, emo the traumatic moment that I asked God not to let me go through until I knew him. And I know God. And that's the very first time that, how do I say? We all say God is real. We all know God is real. And we be saying that because, you know what I'm saying? He is. Um, but God allowed me to encounter him in a very specific way through something that was not accidental for me to know, like, nah, I'm real. And you ask for a thing, and even though it's very, very traumatic, I want you to know I honored that thing. And uh, I have been praying, like, I have been demanding that peace and that joy. I'm like, look, I don't know all of the rules, but you said through you we get peace and we get joy. I'm gonna need you to run that. Like, I'm gonna need you to run the peace and the joy 
that you say we get when we got this relationship with you. I, here's my ticket. I got my relationship with you. Where the peace and the joy? You know, I was doing that aggressive, demanding thing again. Uh, and God ain't tripping on that. Like, he ain't worried about you uh, uh, being upset. Uh, just like most parents ain't worried about their kids being upset. Uh, they just want their babies to be okay. Um, and so he ran me my peace and my joy in the midst of a very traumatic moment. I want to be clear, because uh, people be like, like cleaning that stuff all up and you know what I'm saying, making it look. I got peace and joy in that situation and I was still very, very sad that I lost my baby. Like, that's possible, like that happens. Like, I am very healed from that situation. It's not gonna stop me from crying when I talk about losing my child. Um, we be having these weird expectations of what happiness or peace and joy uh, is. Uh, and I think what we gotta come to realize is that peace and joy is that thing that you get during trauma, during traumatic events. Like, cause low key, it ain't no real reason to have no peace and no joy if ain't nothing going on. Uh, so I like, I, I don't mean to say it in a way that, yeah, and then everything was normal and everything was fine and we just kept it, we just kept moving. Nah, uh, I ain't really get back all the way right as it relates to like pulling myself up off the couch. I'm talking about pulling myself, as it relates to God and my husband <laughs> uh, carrying me off the couch until um, uh, one day, and it was a hard day, it was just a hard grieving day. Uh, I walk into uh, my studio and my baby had put all my music equipment uh, back together. And I need you to understand, Corey don't know nothing about no uh, music and no MIDI controllers and no computers and no mixers, uh, none of that. Um, and despite that, he put all of my stuff like back together. And I mean, he put it together right. Uh, and and I was I was able to acknowledge that like, like, like this man really, really cared for me in a manner. Like he know I ain't made no music cause I, like I couldn't. And like he took the first step and like pushing me along you know what I'm saying? To like coming back to myself. Uh, and it's just a process. And it's just one day uh, at a time. Uh, I went through all of the testing that I could find. I mean, I was hunting doctors down for them to tell me something was wrong with me. And they was like, there's nothing wrong with you. You don't have no clotting disorder. You don't have some underlying uh, disease. Uh, we don't have no answer for you. Uh, you're a perfect specimen of a human. Uh, and sometimes that's worse than, you know, getting the answer. Um, and I still don't have no answer uh, for that. Uh, but it don't, it, it doesn't, uh, it don't wear on me or burden me that I don't have the specific why. I'm more, uh, focused and happy um, that I just know I got an amazing God and an amazing husband. Um, and I did have to deal with anger and guilt, you know what I'm saying, for myself. Um, and it was rough. And I didn't know that I carried that much anger and that guilt. But I did. And you can't. You got to let it go. You can't carry... Uh, death in your body like that. You gotta let it go. You gotta give it over to God.